Welcome with Till Stratford upon Avon. Located some 100 miles northwest of London, this is the beautiful birthplace of William Shakespeare. So, to see or what not to see? That is the question. So, in the words of William Shakespeare, pray, follow, and I'll show you. Stratford upon Avon was founded in the 7th century AD by the Saxons when they invaded what is now Warwickshire. The town's name might look and sound a little bit unusual with all its hyphens, but it's actually a mixture of Celtic and Saxon words. So Strat means street, Ford is a lower part of a riverbed, and Avon was a Celtic word for river. So literally Stratford upon Avon means the street that leads to the fjord to cross the river. Welcome to the birthplace of William Shakespeare. Born on the 23rd of April 1654, William Shakespeare was born here on the top floor next to a little fire. Now it's lucky that William Shakespeare survived because his two siblings that were born before him actually passed away before they reached the age of one. The reason why is because there was an outbreak of the plague. And it is believed that the only reason why Shakespeare survived was because his mother took him out into the countryside to protect him from the outbreak. Inside the building you can see where Shakespeare grew up, where he had his meals, where he slept, where he played with his siblings and also this beautiful garden where he could play. There are two interesting things that I've learned while being here and that is the origins of two idiomatic expressions that we use every day that you may not know the origins of and they both relate to sleeping. So have you ever said to sleep tight or to hit the hay? Well, sleep tight actually comes from the mattresses that were used at this time, back in the 16th century, that were made up of hay and straw and any sort of other stuffing that was soft. So this is the mattress that people would sleep on. And during the night, obviously, all the contents would move and shift. So before going to bed, you would have to hit the hay to distribute evenly the contents of the mattress so you wouldn't have all these lumps and bumps. Now sleep tight relates to what was supporting the mattress which was ropes and the ropes would be bound throughout the woodwork on the bed to protect the mattress from falling through and to keep it tight. So in order to sleep tight you would need to tighten those ropes so you wouldn't have a uncomfortable sleep. This is Shakespeare's new place. This is where Shakespeare lived from 1597 until the day he died in 1616. This isn't the house that he lived in, but this is the area where it was. His house was destroyed 250 years ago, unfortunately. Um, but inside there is an exhibition on what they think the house looked like. The grounds here are very beautiful to walk around. They've got a whole bunch of commissioned pieces by the American artist Greg Wyatt. And each of the statues represent either a character or a passage from one of Shakespeare's works. And within the statues or the sculptures, there are like these hidden faces. So there's a lot of hidden symbolism in each of them. So yeah, I encourage you to take your time and wander around and have a look at each of them. Really beautiful. At the entrance to the garden, there is a sculpture that is inspired by the epilogue from The Tempest, where the main character is giving up his powers. Now, Shakespeare wrote this play in 1616, which was about three years before he passed away, and it's sort of considered like his final words and his sign off, saying, This is it, I'm done. For 19 years, Shakespeare lived at New Place, and it was the only building that he actually bought for his wife and his family. He lived here with his wife and two children, Judith and Susanna. Unfortunately, his son Hamnet died a year before he actually bought this building, so that's sad. Shakespeare paid £120 for New Place, which is an obscene amount of money for the time. Considered that a schoolmaster's salary was only £20 a year, and Shakespeare paid £120 just for this area. Now, this was the most expensive and the largest property in Stratford upon Avon at the time and it was located just opposite his school which he attended so we're going to head there now.
thanks to the success of William Shakespeare's father, John Shakespeare, who was a glove maker, he was able to send Shakespeare to this school room here behind me, adjoined by the Guildhall. He attended the school between the ages of 7 and 14, between 1571 and 1578. The school is still in use up until 11am every day, and the top student every year is chosen to replace the quill in the hand of Shakespeare's monument at his grave. I'm a bat, I'm a bounce. It's a memory game, isn't it? It's how much you remember. And remember, uh, oh, okay, I'll use the there. Memory is not seated up here. Memory is seated just here, where your heart is. Yes, because we say you learn things by heart. So if you learn that here, so we're inside Shakespeare's classroom where there is still a class happening. Uh, they're teaching a bit of Latin and a bit about the curriculum that Shakespeare would have learned when he attended this school. Now it's interesting because in the next room is where Shakespeare would have sat. This room here is fairly recent. Um, but when Shakespeare sat next door, he would sit on what were called forms, not benches. So that's how we get the origins of being in first form, second form, third form. So it's important to note that at this stage there were no girls in class, it was just boys. So it's so inspirational to be here in the classroom where William Shakespeare learned about all the classics, the Romans, the Greeks, all the literature that inspired him and his works throughout his 20 year career. Located directly below the schoolroom, which is above me right now, this is the Guild Hall, and this is where William Shakespeare's dad was the bailiff or the town mayor. So when Shakespeare was five years old, he saw his dad in office. He was the mayor for just one year in 1568. This is Hall's Croft. This is where Susanna, Shakespeare's daughter, lived in 1607 when she married Dr. John Hall. Now in Shakespeare's will, he left a new place to Susanna, so when he passed away, she moved in with her husband. Behind me is Anne Hathaway's cottage, which is about 500 years old and located just a 20 minute walk outside Stratford-upon-Avon. Anne Hathaway lived here before she married William Shakespeare and the two got married when William Shakespeare was 18 and Anne Hathaway was 26 and she was already pregnant so they had a bit of a hasty wedding. You can visit the cottage and go inside to see its original furnishings as well as the romantic garden outside. Located three and a half miles or 5.5 kilometers outside of Stratford-upon-Avon is Mary Arden's farmhouse. Mary Arden was William Shakespeare's mother and she lived here until she married John Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's father. They got married in 1557. There are two buildings on the site here and the building behind me is called the Palmer's Farmhouse because up until the 2000s they thought that this was where Mary Arden lived with her family but it was actually the building next door. While the building behind me has maintained its traditional Tudor look, the house that Mary grew up in which was built by her father Robert in 1514 doesn't look quite as traditional. It's gone through a few different changes over the years, but let's go have a look inside. This here is Mary Arden's house, so let's go take a look inside. And just behind me is a really low doorway. And the reason why it's so low is because in the 1600s, it was very expensive to cut through any structural beams. Otherwise, it would have had to pay extra to implement new beams. So this way, they cut halfway into it without compromising the structure of the building. So there you have it. Mary Arden's farm is a working Tudor farm, so it's very much a great spot to bring families and spend the day. It covers 20 acres and there's lots of farm animals that you can interact with. They've got horses, cows, donkeys, rabbits, birds, chickens, everything. It's a great place to hang out for the afternoon or just for a few hours. 
Behind me is the Holy Trinity Church where William Shakespeare was baptized and buried. He died on the 23rd of April 1666 and was buried two days later on the 25th. He was only 52 years old and he died as the result of alcohol poisoning of all things. And you can go inside and you can see where he was buried along with his family members. celebrates Shakespeare's work and it was dedicated to the city of Stratford-upon-Avon by Lord Ronald Gower in 1888. He commissioned this memorial and it took him 10 years to sculpt it and to fund it, most of it from his personal finances. Placed around the memorial are four statues from Shakespeare's plays. You got Falstaff, Lady Macbeth, Hamlet and behind me is Prince Hull. What better place to watch a Shakespeare play than in Stratford-upon-Avon? The Royal Shakespeare Company has three theatres here in Stratford and the one behind me is the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. This is the main one and you can head to the top floor for a pre-show dinner where you get beautiful views over the River Avon. What better way to learn about Stratford-upon-Avon than joining the multi-award winning Stratford Town Walk. It goes for two hours and an adult ticket will only set you back six pounds. So let's go and join one. So I've just signed up for the town walk and they give you five vouchers that you can use at any one of the places on this list. So I highly recommend doing the tour at the start of your trip to make the most of these vouchers. and unique thing to do in Stratford-upon-Avon is to go street lamp post hunting. So this one behind me was donated from the state of Israel. There are about 50 different lamp posts here and the reason why they're here is because a man who worked in the town council of Stratford-on-Avon, he asked his peers if they would donate a street lamp as a way of representing the different people that visited the town of Stratford-upon-Avon. So if you don't want to walk all the way around the river, then you can catch Britain's last chain ferry, which will set you back just 50p. So it's dinner time and I'm heading to the Old Thatch Tavern, which dates back to 1470. And it is the only building in the city that has a thatched roof. Located behind me in the center of town is the Garrick Inn. Now between this one and the Old Thatch Tavern, both claim to be the oldest pubs in Stratford-upon-Avon. But what makes this one special is that it's haunted and it's also where they believe a bout of plague broke out in 1564, which is the same year that Shakespeare was born. to get a swan's eye view of Stratford on this river cruise. It goes for 40 minutes and costs just seven pounds for an adult ticket. from me i hope you've enjoyed this video about what to do in stratford upon avon if you have leave a nice big thumbs up subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram facebook and twitter and if you have any questions whatsoever leave them down below and i'll get back to you until next time i bid you farewell bye